um, thanks for the intro, and um, I'm happy to see so many of you here. It's hard to find this East Hall, so uh, thanks for the effort. Uh, thanks to the organizers, um, they took great care of uh, all our speakers, and I hope that uh, you all are going to have a great time at the conference. So, my name is Wojtek Czukowski. Um My name is hard to remember and hard to pronounce. I'm from Poland. That's what you get. And um, I'm going to talk about server rendered React um, native. Um, it's by far the coolest thing I've ever worked on. And um, it's not as much a programming thing as, as it is a product thing. Because I really believe that it can change the way um, we, we use phones or applications. And um, let, me, let me tell you how. I'm going to use my yesterday's trip from uh, Krakow, where I live, to Berlin as an example. So um, first thing I did was checking um, schedule for uh, the, the, the uh, public transportation from uh, Krakow to Krakow Airport uh, on, on, on this app. Then I compared the, 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 the train with a taxi. Taxi was super expensive, so I went with the train. I bought the ticket in yet another app. I got to the airport. Uh, I showed the uh, boarding pass uh, in the Ryanair app. Then uh, I came to Berlin. I flew in. I opened up Google Maps. I checked how to how to get to uh, the restaurant that I wanted to go to. Um, I had to check um, what ticket I should buy. Uh, and in the meantime, I found this app where you can uh, buy tickets, but I just didn't want to register uh, register there, so I just went with the with the paper one. Um, and then I had to check where the hotel is in the mail app. And the whole trip, the whole workflow was a mess. Um, it probably looked m more like this. This is chaotic, and this is chaotic on purpose because the way we sort of do activities with applications is like one application per activity and not one application per sort of workflow. And what if we could change that and have one app that does multiple things and not only the, the ones that I shot here, but what if I didn't have to log in to buy the, to buy the ticket uh, for for the metro here, or had a calendar um, integra integrated, and the hotel, and maybe even the food, and the concept of of such app uh, of such apps exists already, and it's called uh, the super app. Um, there are many well-known super apps out there. Uh, the the like most well-known example is. Uh, WeChat, uh, it's also Grab or or Paytm in uh, India, but um, all of these are sort of operating system apps. So they they really they really look similar to iOS or Android when, when you open them up, or not not look similar, but they work similarly. And the way I think about it is. Um, sort of super app as a workflow and not, and not as an operating system. So um, the trip that I showed you before is sort of a workflow or an activity, extended activity that has an order and uh, like there's, there are concrete steps and um, it would be really great and much more productive to integrate it into one. Um, another example which actually exists is um, check out on Instagram. So um, Instagram is a great tool for e-commerce and um, many huge and, and really small players use it. And Instagram um, last year added this uh, feature where you can buy something inside Instagram without leaving the app. You have your details in there. You have payment in there. Everything is in there. So um, the um, it's much uh, the 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 whole experience here and the, the process of um, 
buying things is streamlined. So it's easier for users, it's easier to acquire um, the, the customers. There are other examples like Foursquare, that's from a couple of years back. Uh, you could um, get the, um, the reserve table and even get the Uber to the restaurant. Um, two weeks ago, uh, Booking uh, added ride hailing uh, to the application. So now they are sort of becoming a workflow app for travel. They have the hotels, uh, car rental, uh, they have the, the ride hailing uh, restaurants. And I really believe that in the near future, um, every app will be a super app. So think about what you're working on. Maybe you have, uh, I don't know, a calendar app. Uh, how good it would be if the user could just uh, get an Uber from the, or whatever taxi from the uh, calendar app. And maybe you could even get some revenue from it because you incentivize the action. And now the obvious, um, the obvious question is, so does it mean that super apps cause monopoly because you're going to have fewer apps and, um, you know, bigger, th that causes bigger players. But I would argue that the, the, the opposite is true. Super apps cause, um, hyper competition because, um, when you have one app with with a concrete workflow the service providers inside those apps might compete with each other and on the inverse when um, you have services separate from the apps uh, those services can be reused by other apps so uh, a good example is uh, city mapper uh, which has uh, scooters uh, inside the uh, inside the app and um, the customer acquisition cost for a sc scooter company goes down because uh, the user doesn't need to uh, download another app and um, like the company doesn't need to make a marketing campaign to uh, just let the know users about, the, about their service. It just is just displayed within the app. So you get the customer when you, uh, when you need uh, them. And now, like, you might be thinking, um, so um, how do we do it? Um, the obvious idea is APIs. Uh, so we are all uh, familiar with application programming interfaces. We, we use those all the time. Or maybe um, SDKs. So um, you integrate some third party uh, product into your app this way. But I think that it's actually um, server rendered apps. So um, you take the interface and put, put it on the server and have some sort of mechanism that renders that interface uh, inside, your, um, inside, inside your app. And um, I call it user, uh, UI as a service. I know it's um, a bit cheesy, but um, and it's uh, the project uh, that I'm working on, NARS. It's open source now. Um, it's available on GitHub. Uh, I open sourced it earlier this morning, and um, that was my my first talk. My first thought. <laughs> Look at Bill Gates. <laughs> Let's see there it is. Um, and before I tell you more about like how it works, let, just let me let me show you a quick um, demo. So, can you see the code back there? Okay, good. So, um, so um, this is um, this is the code. It, lo it looks just like React Native code that you know, but you can see that it's um, imported from um, NARS. It's not imported from um, React Native, and all of this, all of this stuff that you see here, it's run on Node. It's run on the server. It's not on the client. And this is sort of boring. Like that's just a template. But where React really shines is when you add state. 
Uh, so maybe let's add some state. Um, let's 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 do it more active. Um, so I'm gonna. So what I'm doing now is changing so that the background color it will be switching from black uh, from blue to red. And mind you, all of this logic is on the on the server. It's uh, um, sent to the client in some way, and I will explain it later. That's going too long, sorry for that. Um, anyway, this should work. Yeah, so we have a state change on the server, and the, the, the sort of interface update is sent to the client. And as I said before, all of this. Um, all the code that I that I just wrote was was run on a on a node on an uh, like on a node server, and there there are really three components: the node server. Um, then we have the bridge, and the way those two communicate is defined by the by the bridge, and specifically um, the component called example one, as you could see here, uh, is defined in a config. Uh, the config is um, some sort of object with keys. The keys um, name uh, name the components that 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 you have, and the config is statically typed in TypeScript, and um, it's also validated in runtime. You can think of it as GraphQL schema, but for fetching a component. Um, then there's the communication layer, and it's implemented in Protobuf. So um, it's essentially a uh, serialization format that, that, that I use uh, here. And it's compact, it's fast, and you can send views, so the view hierarchy, uh, as you saw, and some primitive values over, uh, over the Protobuf. And it's useful for customizing what, what you see from the client. Um, and the third part is remote component. So remote component is actually what you put on your client to fetch the, uh, the, the app from the server. Um, it has a name prop and the, and the props prop, uh, but we're going to fo focus on the name now. As, is, as I said, it's uh, statically typed, and it is sort of similar to GraphQL schema. So if I put something else, like some dummy name uh, in, as, as a name, there will be um, a, an, a compile compile time error, and now you see those props there that they're, they're unused. So um, you know, how about uh, how about adding some props? <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so this is the uh, this is the config. Um, I have two. Oh, that's that's. Um, I have two components here, um, and it doesn't have any props right now. So maybe let's let's allow the uh, the programmer to define color one and color two on the client, send it to the server, and the server is gonna send back views based on the colors sent from the client. So, um, there you go. And it broke in runtime because there's runtime ver verification. Then we add props here, just like you would do in, uh, and this is, we are back on the server. And it's just like you would do in in a in a normal um, React or React Native application. And instead of using style red and style blue here, we're gonna use prop, uh, props color one and props color two. And the last thing we need to pass the props and this is this is the client this is the code that's that's just on the client just a simple remote component so core one i know what do you want guys yellow and um maybe core two purple so now i have the uh, I'm so relieved that it worked. Um, it's it's not fake, so um, it's a <laughs> major achievement. Anyway, um, the color uh, is sent from the client to the server. Uh, it decodes the strings, and we put it in the um, style object. And based on that, the views are sent from the server to the client with like appropriate colors. And that's that's really empowering because um like you you can do a lot from here so um first of all it's all captain sync uh, and the typescript or uh and the runtime verification um just ho holds you by hand so that you don't make uh too many mistakes um and then uh you can pass different values it, 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 it's not just strings um uh, that decoder and encoder function is uh uh it's a function so you can get your custom object and deserialize it or serialize it and send it to the server do something with it uh return an interface based on that um it's uh i think it's uh extremely powerful however right now we only saw um, server that returns the user interface, but there's no interaction. And UI without interaction is, um, I know it's a video, essentially. So we're not doing uh, much better than than video. So let's let's add some interaction, uh, maybe uh, a button or something, uh, so that uh, you can see how you can build something real uh, with with this. Um, so I'm gonna switch to example two. There you go. Oh, uh, that's a, that's a bad spoiler. <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. So um, again, we have the video, the painting. Uh, nothing happens. I cannot um, tap the button. Um, stupid. So let's add some inter interaction. Um, I'm gonna add a touchable op opacity and wrap the button uh, in it.
Mm. Okay. Now I can click on it, but nothing happens. Uh, neither on the client nor on the server. So, um, it's still not a major uh, improvement. It's still a template, maybe interactive video. Um, but, let's change the progress. So here we simulate some sort of, I don't know, maybe you process a file and you have some progress. Usually, like right now, you probably um, you just do a fake progress uh, progress bar, no judgment. But what if we actually uh, want to do something meaningful with the data from the server? So um, imagine that you re uh, render the interface on the server and you render the progress based on actual data um, that's t taken from the uh, data processing pipeline uh, progress. So as the on-press uh, handler, we're gonna pass the uh, the servers. Yeah, we're gonna pass the 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 function that increments the fake progress. And as you can see now, I tap it on the client, and the client is just the client is just like one line of code. This like rendering example two, and um. It updates the state on the server, and then it returns the new view um, to the client. And now we're um, we see this, and it's still it's it's better. It's it, at least it's not the video, but how about some animations? So uh, the the interfaces uh, in native apps are particularly de delightful because of interfaces, uh, because of animations. Um, so when you think about animations, you think about uh, 60 frames per second. And uh, you think about a lot of um, communication between the, traditionally between the JavaScript code and between um, your uh, native, uh, native code in, in the context of React Native applications. So with the server-side rendering, it, it's not really, it doesn't sound really feasible to have an animation because uh, what, are you gonna send a request on every frame? That's, that's stupid. So um, fortunately, there, there were very smart people who made uh, React Native reanimated, and it's a library that solves this problem in the context of um, local React Native app. So the problem they try to solve is that when you cross a bridge uh, during the e execution, and um, it's during an animation, uh, you, you can you can feel some I know a f a flickering on the, on the screen, or maybe the gesture is not following your finger. So, actually, the same APIs uh, can be used here because we also had the bridge, but the bridge is just much much longer instead of um, the bridge from JS to um, Objective C or, or Java is a bridge from from your JavaScript to JavaScript on the server. So the hook that I'm using here is it, it just has some uh, reanimated code. I'm I'm not gonna go, go into the detail how reanimated works. It's uh, it's a little bit weird API, but also great. Um, that's <laughs> sort of but I am gonna make an animated value based on the on the value that I had before. So instead of instead of having those those jumps uh instead of having those jumps when I when I when I click next I see this animation, and it's and it's awesome. It's just like a nati native app. Um, so this uh, this thing in particular is incredibly, incredibly um, powerful because um, you got 60 frames per second with the logic, business logic, defined on the server, and 
strips during the uh, during the animation. So you just like you, you just forget about the bridge and oh my, what's going on? Uh, it, it was it was different here. You just forget about the bridge and you don't cross it. And now, um, how about uh, HTML and CSS? Because uh, I'm presenting to you this completely different approach where you render React Native on the on the server, and maybe this is, this is a, a solved problem. But I think the like um, the experience is proving the um, that. The the user experience in native apps is is just is just better, and in that in this context specifically, you might want to have just one single little component render on the server, and the rest of the app is just a normal uh, React Native apps app. And um, there's another approach to solve this sort of problem of updating the app or dynamic app from the server and the client and sending uh, Node.js, uh, sending JS bundles. So you send the sort of React Native application from uh, the from the server um, to the client, the whole thing, maybe two or three megabytes. Actually, many companies do that um, for, for like uh, bigger, uh, bigger applications. But the problem here is that the initial load time is really big and when you have global state in those um, JS bundles, things can get, can get really messy really quickly. Um, and then like a more high level question would be, why don't I just simply focus on the web and do um, and the web? Because web has this accessibility and going from one application to another built in into the concept. But the web doesn't provide the the workflow that that I talked about uh, initially, where you can go from one app to the other in a in a in a streamlined way. You have those URLs, different logins on different websites, uh, bad for the user, bad for the business. And uh, lastly, I want to just say a few words about API less apps. So here I'm talking about it in the context of uh, super apps, but there's also an opportunity to build apps just like just like you do. Uh, but instead of reaching out to the API to fetch, I don't know, a list of data, you can render the list of data uh, on the server and just display it uh, inside, inside your app instead. So you just get rid of the API. You have one sort of knowledge to implement the backend and the client. And it might just all work. I'm not... Uh, too much invested into, the, to, into this idea, but I would be curious to, to hear your thoughts. And just last thing, I want I want to um, just, it's all possible thanks to the library called, called React Reconciler. Um, it's it's in the core of React, and it allows you to build your own sort of React, just like NARS is sort of its own React thing. and. It, ha it has it has the different host config, so you have the, the DOM for the React DOM native. There's PDF, and you can do your own. So if you have an idea of turning some sort of um, just library uh, into a React library, maybe uh, turn it turn your API into a, a component API. Um, React Reconciler is a great way uh, to do that. Um, so that's it from me. Um, you can uh, re reach out on Twitter or by mail. I'd be if you, especially if you, if you like, if you like to use NARS, I would be super uh, interested to hear uh, thoughts. I also have a, a newsletter about super apps. It's called This Week in Super Apps. It's a biweekly sh newsletter, and. Um, uh, if you're interested in, the, in this concept of one app that, has, that defines a workflow, um, you might find that interesting. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum.